Hello and welcome everybody to the first ever radio show for my online magazine called Sustainable Community Development. I am your host, Camille Zielinski, and today we will be diving into episode 1, Sustainability in the Workplace. While learning about various topics surrounding international community development, I have decided to host a radio talk show in regards to Module 3, Sustainable Development. So, let's get started, shall we? Let's briefly discuss what to expect in today's talk show. Firstly, I'll introduce myself so you get an understanding of my background and the knowledge I bring. Then we will dive into the main topics. There will be primarily two areas of main discussion. The first one being sustainable development. What is it? And how can you achieve it? The second one being a sustainable city. We're going to dive into an example of a city that actually has changed the way they structure and organize themselves specifically to achieve sustainability. So first, let's briefly talk about myself and the background knowledge that I bring. I'm currently taking my Bachelor's of Business Administration with a major in Marketing. My passion has always been in the business industry, and I look forward to hosting this radio talk show uh, with the filter of a business perspective. I hope to bring the best of my knowledge into the topics that we will be discussing moving forward. So the first area of discussion will be surrounding sustainable development. What is it and how can you achieve it? So according to IISD, which is the International Institute for Sustainable Development, sustainable development is defined as sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Now, you don't need to be a business student to agree with this. Sustainability is essential, especially when in the workplace. Now this goes far beyond, you know, just swapping out the proper light bulb for more efficiency or even managing the thermostat. Sustainability has drivers that can touch into both environmental and social factors. From an environmental perspective in the workplace, it's about establishing a baseline in the workplace. A good way to start is by managing your organization's eco footprint. You could start by tracking your monthly utility bills and building that baseline to see where opportunities exist and where they lie. Encourage your employees to turn off their computers before leaving work. Encourage them to turn off unnecessary lighting. And also encourage a more eco-friendly way of transportation to work. Now we all know that story. It's very difficult to uh, encourage somebody to change their transportation habits. It seems like an automatic failure. But the importance is to get your employees involved. The more involved they are with sustainable practices, the better you are off at your organization. Then there is social sustainability, which is more so about architects specializing in sustainable design that directly help with cutting costs in the workplace. So whether that's you're designing a new building or trying to redesign uh, your current workplace to help cut those energy costs. Now, with the remaining time that we have here, Let's dive into the example of a sustainable city. Specifically, we will be looking into Curitiba, a city in Brazil with a population of about 1.88 million people. Today, Curitiba is viewed as a model for many cities in the world as the gold standard in sustainable urban planning. Fun fact, in a recent survey, 99% of Curitiba's residents said they were happy in their city. If we can get this 99% across, multiple cities in the world, just imagine what type of future we are building for ourselves. This all started with Jamie Lerner, a graduated architecture student that led a movement against the former mayor's vision for Curitiba. Jamie firmly believed that the existing mayor's vision would hinder and hurt all the history and the identity that Curitiba has established. Lerner, who was first the planner, later became the mayor of Curitiba in 1971 and stayed mayor for three terms until 2002 because the people believed in his ideas and his vision for the city. Instead of widening the city, Lerner did the exact opposite. He made more room in the city. He designed a system which featured the following. A five main traffic road system with a two bus lane right down the middle which ran frequently, precisely every 60 seconds during peak hours to ensure maximum efficiency. These buses were color coded. Every bus carried a different functionality. Red buses work the express buses with very minimal stops. Orange buses brought people from the outlying districts to the express routes. Green buses 
brought in the suburban citizens to the express routes. And then the typical gray buses, which took suburban cities directly around the main parts of the city with many frequent stops. Lerner also implemented elevated glass boarding tubes, which helped speed up the process of purchasing tickets and allows for faster access to transportation. The city has been flourishing ever since Lerner stepped into office and helped with the redesigning of Curitiba. If you would like to learn more, please check out the various TED Talks, YouTube videos, and the many case studies that have been done on this beautiful city and the steps it took to becoming sustainable. And with that, I wanted to thank everybody for tuning in to Episode 1, Sustainability in the Workplace. Special thanks to Mount Royal University, specifically International Community Development. Until next time, make tomorrow a brighter future.